Earth's number one, Australia's number one. This is 7 News. Tonight, a 13-year-old Perth boy killed, hit by a truck in front of his sister. New developments in the Rotnest Head mystery. Police search a city apartment. Exmouth braces for Cyclone Norel upgraded to a Category 4. In case you get roads cut for some time. And Phil Hughes creates history at the MCG. There it is. The first Australian cricketer ever to do that. From the studios of Seven Perth, Susanna Carr. Good evening. A 13-year-old boy has died after he was hit by a truck. It happened in Ellenbrook this afternoon. Police say the boy was crossing busy Nangara Road when his sis with his sister when he was struck. Alexis Donkin reports. It happened in a flash, a school holiday tragedy on busy Nangara Road. A 13-year-old boy hit by a truck just before 1 o'clock this afternoon near the intersection of Lucino Boulevard. The boy was carrying his skateboard when he went to cross the busy road with his sister. Police say as he was crossing the road, one of his thongs came off. The boy went back onto the road to get his thong. That's when he was hit by the truck towing a trailer. He was with his 14-year-old sister. She saw it all happen. The sister is quite young. She's still quite distraught about what's happened today. The children's family is from a housing estate in the same suburb. The children's parents were at the crash scene within minutes. It's going to be hard for the family to come to terms with such a tragic loss today. Um, obviously, this was not something that was waiting to happen. This is just a tragic incident that's occurred that's lost the life of a very young boy. Police say the truck driver did everything he could, braking, swerving, but he couldn't avoid the boy. Alexis Donkin, 7 News. As we go to where a major police operation is underway in the city where police have cordoned off an apartment. Grant Taylor is in Hay Street and Grant, it's believed there's a link to a human head that was found at Rotnest. That's right, so police say they now know the identity of the man whose head was found on Rotnest and we understand this apartment complex is where he used to live. Now a big forensic team has been examining the inside of his unit all day but we don't know yet if this is where police believe he was killed. You'll remember that uh, his head, which was wrapped in plastic, was found by a young girl washed up on a Rotness beach on Sunday. Police are yet to release the man's name. They say next of kin haven't been notified. All we've been told so far is that he was a white male with a beard. He was also missing several of his front teeth. At this stage, police are saying nothing about who they believe may have killed the man or why. So just repeating, there's been several major developments today in the Rotnest head case. Police say they now know who the man is and they'll spend uh, well into this evening searching his apartment behind me here in East Perth. So Thanks, Grant. Tropical cyclone Norel has been upgraded to a Category 4 as it moves closer to the WA coast. Pilbara residents spent the day stocking up on food and supplies with winds of 140 kilometres an hour expected to hit the area this weekend. Rob Scott reports from Exmouth. Sabrina Rampey is packing up and leaving town. She's driving south, keen to stay well ahead of whatever Cyclone Norel has in store. We planned our holiday to leave in the next couple of weeks, but because of the weather, it's better if we go just in case we, we get stuck. The cyclone was upgraded from a Category 3 to Category 4 overnight. It's packing winds up to 250 kilometres an hour at its centre. For those who've decided to bunker down and wait it out, stocking up on the essentials is a must. Things that are you know, non-perishable in case you get roads cut for some time. It's not just food that's flying off the shelves. The local tackle shop has sold out of fridges and generators. Yeah, got one left now. All the rest of them all gone. 64-year-old Ken Cameron is a cyclone veteran. He lost everything when Vance almost wiped Exmouth off the map in 1999. <laughs> but this time, he's ready. Look at the walls on this one, how thick they are. <laughs> so I hope this don't blow over. <laughs> the latest computer modelling has Narel tracking southwest, away from the coast. If she continues on her current path, Narelle should miss Exmouth by around 300 kilometres. There's always a chance um, yeah, it could turn in and um, that's why we, we keep watch until it's um, level to us or past us. But the Weather Bureau is predicting heavy rain and winds gusting to 140 kilometres an hour to batter parts of the Pilbara on Sunday. We are getting ready to um, be prepared for the cyclone. Exmouth is as prepared as it can be. And Rob Scott joins us live from Exmouth for the latest on the cyclone threat. Rob, how is it? 
Well, Sue, over the past couple of hours, the wind here has really pick up, picked up and there's now a strong breeze pushing through the town. You can also probably see behind me there are some fairly ominous looking clouds rolling in off the ocean and they don't look like they're too far away. The marina is also looking pretty busy with all manner of boats firmly secured in anticipation for those strong winds which are expected to hit Exmouth probably tomorrow night and there'll also be some strong rain. Now earlier today the SES was considering raising the alert level from blue to yellow but so far that hasn't happened which is of course great news for the people of Exmouth. Sue? Thanks, Rob, and we'll be keeping you up to date on the cyclone with the special extended weekend sunrise tomorrow live in WA from 4 a.m. A manager, a mother, has made a desperate plea to thieves who broke into her home to return stolen videos of her young children. Seven News can reveal she's not the only victim. There's been a big jump in the number of home burglaries in Mandurah, and few thieves are being caught. Making new memories today... But Jess Sprague says nothing will replace the photos and videos stolen when thieves broke into her Greenfields home last week. So they'd obviously climbed through. About $5,000 worth stolen, laptops, a camera and iPad, all insured, but the contents priceless and not backed up. Evie's third birthday, eight-month-old Henry's first smile. So the 27-year-old put this sign in her front yard. So I was in shock and then I got really upset at what was taken and now I'm more angry just... They've come in my house, you look around and there's kids' toys everywhere. So you're breaking, you know, you're robbing from family. Locals have rallied behind her plea online, telling their own stories. Four other homes in the same block robbed the same day. The number of home burglaries across the Peel Police District has more than doubled in five months, from 146 last July to 332 break-ins in November. According to police figures, suspects were arrested in 6.9% of recorded cases. We do have resourcing issues down at Mandra. We do urgently require more police. The police minister says the figures are a significant concern and she's deployed a team of additional detectives to Peel. As for Jess Sprague, she just wants her memories back. No questions yeah. asked? No questions asked. Just put it in my letterbox. Jessica Vanderen, 7 News. A man has been killed after he rolled his quad bike at Booth and Darra near Durian Bay. The man was found at 5.30 this morning, but the crash could have happened last night. Police say the victim, who's in his 50s, was crushed when the quad bike rolled. Family of a young Perth woman killed in a motorbike crash say their daughter hasn't died in vain after the driver responsible was jailed. Carly Rustin was killed on her 24th birthday. She was a passenger on a motorbike driven by an off-duty soldier who'd been drinking. Tears for a daughter who died too soon on her 24th birthday. We will never have our daughter back. She'll never have a wedding. We'll never have a grandchild. It was supposed to be a quick ride around the block. Carly Rustand hopped on the back of a motorbike driven by 24-year-old off-duty soldier Giles Graham. Graham had just returned from a tour of duty in Afghanistan. He'd been drinking and was speeding along Riverside Drive in the city, 21 kilometres over the limit. The bike crashed into a sign. Carly died at the scene. Giles Graham was today jailed for 15 months for dangerous driving occasioning death. He will have to live with it forever but at least he gets to live. In a pre-sentence report, Graham said of the crash, I'm never going to forgive myself. How can I be a good man when I have so much blood on my hands? The magistrate said Giles Graham's clean record and genuine remorse helped her to reduce the jail sentence, but she said this case was too serious to let him walk free. Graham had a blood alcohol reading of 0.107. I hope that this will deter anyone else from taking a stupid Stupid risk. Chantel Tui, 7 News. Child sex abuse victims will soon be able to tell their stories to the Federal Government Royal Commission, which has now been formally established. Over the next three years, six commissioners will take evidence from Australians who were abused and examine how institutions dealt with the perpetrators. It's been a long wait for justice for Anthony and Christine Foster. Their two daughters were abused by a priest when they were children. One of their daughters later took her own life. It's real that this happens. But today they had something to celebrate. The Royal Commission into Child Sexual Abuse has been formally established. Today is the end point of what so many people have fought for 
argued for. The inquiry will look at how institutions dealt with sexual abuse, while victims will get the chance to tell their story to a special unit that will work with police to investigate the abuse and prosecute the offenders. We want your voices to be heard. The inquiry will run until at least December 2015, with an interim report to be released in June next year. There will be six commissioners. New South Wales Supreme Court Chief Justice Peter McClellan will head the inquiry. The commissioners have the power to compel people to come forward and give evidence. The Catholic Church says it's ready to cooperate. We're wanting to embrace this openly so that the truth can come out. Sarah Wiley, 7 News. Two children have been rescued after a house caught fire in Kenwick. The boys, aged two and five, were trapped in the backyard. Neighbours responded to their calls for help. Kate Smithers reports. Comforted by their rescuer, Two-year-old Daniel and five-year-old Blessing had to be rescued when fire engulfed their Gayhurst Street home. The lady, she was waiting in the front, she said, oh my goodness, there's kids in the house, there's kids in the house. The boy's auntie couldn't get to them. They were in the backyard. All she could do was shriek for help. Neighbours say they could hear two children screaming and banging at the garage door. They couldn't get out because it was locked. They were shouting out because they were at the back there. And no one was able to go in at the back. But I couldn't knock it down or open it or anything. I ran and jumped over the fence, so ran around, jumped over the fence, grabbed the two little kids who were waiting on the um, garage door. They were scratching on it. They were just crying and shaking, but they were fine. The family had just moved from Tanzania to start a new life here in Perth. Their new home is now unlivable. Kate Smithers, 7 News. Australia is well placed to dominate the Academy Awards with Hugh Jackman, Naomi Watts and Jackie Weaver all nominated for an Oscar. A fourth Aussie, makeup artist Rick Findlater, was also celebrating a nomination for his work on The Hobbit. It's a good one for the Aussies. Naomi Watts tried not to watch today's Oscar announcement, but relented and ended up seeing her second Best Actress nomination for the Boxing Day tsunami movie The Impossible. That's why I chose not to watch the TV. I thought, why torture myself even more? You guys are taking over the world, which is fine with me. Hugh Jackman in Les Miserables. The day another destiny. Jackman must now be considered hot favourite for Best Actor, but faces two-time winner Daniel Day-Lewis in Lincoln. I would vote for Hugh Jackman because when you look at that performance, he's not only terrific, but you think nobody else could have played that part. Three years ago, veteran actress Jackie Weaver was unknown in Hollywood. But now the 65-year-old has two Oscar nominations, this time for Best Supporting Actress in the Silver Linings Playbook. While some Aussies are celebrating today, others are not. Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban both nominated for Golden Globes on Monday, missed out. In all nine movies will vie for best picture when the Oscars are announced at the end of February, including Lincoln with 12 nominations overall, Life of Pi with 11 and Les Mis with eight. In Hollywood, Mike A. Moore, 7 News. The latest on the nation's bushfire emergency, that's next. Plus school shooting. A teacher hailed a hero over a teenage gunman. And man's best friend or the king of the jungle? How this animal sparked a police emergency.